It was a stunning upset in Alabama last night as the deep red state elected its first Democratic senator in 25 years. Doug Jones narrowly pulled out a win over Roy Moore, who was plagued by several sexual harassment allegations. Moore has so far refused to concede on the hopes of a recount. Jones is about 20,000 votes ahead. And the director of the Marquette Law School poll, Charles Franklin, is here. Welcome back. Welcome back, Charles. Good, Good to, to be here. You. Good to have an election in December. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what is, I mean, a lot of people are very surprised yeah. by this. Well, it is a big upset in the grand scheme of things. Alabama hasn't elected a, a Democrat in a long, long time to statewide office. And early on, after the primary, Roy Moore looked like he was going to cruise to another Republican victory. Uh, then the Washington Post stories about how he dealt with teenage girls uh, 40 years ago came out. And it still looked like a close race, and as we saw, it ended up about a point and a half win for the Democrat. Under other circumstances, we'd call that a close outcome. But given how Republican the state is, this is a major, major upset for Democrats yeah, to Trump succeed won like 30 with. 30 or 40 percent in the, in the presidential election? Yes. Uh, Trump got over 60, well over 60 percent, I think 64 percent of the vote. So a big margin there. Um, the last time we had a Senate election there, in, well, for this seat in 2014, um, it wasn't even a Democrat on the ballot. Wow. It was Jeff Sessions unopposed. This, so this is a big setback for Republicans. How big of a setback is it for President Trump? Well, I think it is a strong signal that even in Alabama, this was a bridge too far by a point and a half. But it also shows that even with exceptional scandal about a, a nominee, it was still as close as it was. Mm -hmm. So I think there, you can look at it as it shifted the vote by 30 points from the presidential race, which is astonishingly large, and yet it still ended up being a very close contest. As we reported at the top of the hour, a lot of Republicans were relieved that Moore did not win. Uh, we saw that members of Congress in particular had been fairly quick to denounce more before the election among Republicans. Not all by any means, but a, a fair number were. But within Alabama, there were very few Republicans outspoken in opposition. The big exception was Senator Shelby, the other Republican senator, or now the Republican <laughs> senator from Alabama, who had said he was not voting for more and went on the Sunday shows this weekend to specifically say that in pretty strong terms. Uh, that was noted in Alabama, and in fact, the Jones campaign used it in campaign ads there. Since you're in polling, I'm sure you're fascinated yeah. to see where the votes were, and it looks like women, African-American women, yes. and younger voters are the ones that turn the tide for him. And a lot of Republicans voted, excuse me, a lot of um, Republicans voted for Doug Jones. Yes, there was more crossover. Democrats, not surprisingly, went 98% for, for Jones. But Republicans fell down to 91% for more. Now, you might not think 91% is a low margin, but that 8% that crossed over to vote for Jones was a part of this. Also, independents split 51-43, so you saw a, an imbalance there. I think ahead of the election, there was a lot of hand-wringing about whether African Americans were going to turn out, whether Jones had done enough to encourage black turnout. The results last night showed that African Americans turned out in large numbers, uh, making up a little more as a percentage of the electorate than they do as registered voters. Mm. So that was a strong showing. And in fact, of the uh, Jones vote was 89% of what Hillary Clinton got last year in 2016, whereas the Moore vote was just 49% mm. of what Trump got. Some of that's crossover, but I'm sure most of it is Republicans staying home. If I'm a Republican running next year in the midterms, am I nervous? You should be very nervous in the sense that across 63 special elections that we've held in the last 12 months, believe it or not, uh, 63, the average swing from the Trump vote to the Republican vote in these is down 10 percentage points. 10 percentage point swing across election districts would make a very big impact. Now, it's not likely that those special election results will hold up in a general election ne next year, 
but certainly all the evidence we have right now is a strong democratic surge. The question really for 2018 is how strong? If it's 10 points, then that's enormous. That's like 2006 or the reverse of 2010. Talking politics right before Christmas. <laughs> a gift keeps giving. It, it is a gift. It Happy is a holidays gift. to you, sir. Great and to see you, Charles. Thank you.